Hi, this is Captain Mike from Forbes Fishing, and today we have another truck video. And once again, this is my 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD AT4, and I've put a ARE CX HD topper on the back, which has blocked my rear view mirror camera. And, um, you know, once you put that cap on, you really can't see through the back because it has a solid aluminum door and you really rely on that rear view camera. So in today's episode, I'm going to mount a camera relocation kit from Camera Source. Stay tuned. <music> Okay, here's what you get from the kit from Camera Source. Uh, here's a, basically an extension cable that will extend your OEM camera from the uh, rear brake light, third brake light, all the way back to the back of your cap. And it's gonna have a GM specific plug here. And that's the plug that connects into the camera. Here's the camera itself. There's the plug I was just talking about. Um, it could be mounted to a flat space. They also give you this very uh, specific mounting bracket for this one is for the ARE and the Lear caps. And this is going to clamp on to the third brake light of the cap. Then attach the camera with a bolt. Uh, also in the kit is some 3M. This is the uh, automotive style VHB tape to put the um, third brake light back in after you remove it. And they give you enough wire ties to secure the extension cable uh, under the frame to other wire looms that are down there. Before I get started, I'm going to disconnect the battery by uh, removing the negative lead and this. Uh, battery bracket that's holding down the battery is kind of in the way. So use a 13 millimeter uh, wrench to move that aside and then a 10 millimeter socket to take the uh, terminal end off. Okay, in the rear seat on the driver's side is where we need to connect that uh, replacement cable. And if we peel back the headliner just a little bit, you see that blue connector? That's the connector you're looking for. To get the headliner down enough to access that blue plug, we're going to need to remove a few things around the door, including the coat hanger. Use a t trim removal tool to peel back the little cover, and then a 8mm socket to remove the bolt. Using a slotted trim removal tool, you could remove the coat hanger the rest of the way. Once you have it out, you can see what I'm talking about. The uh, hanger has a little Christmas tree push plug on it. Next you need to remove the weather stripping from the door and it's just a friction fit, no glues or sealants on it. Uh, just grab it with both hands and uh, wiggle it until it comes off the body uh, of the vehicle. You need to do this at the roof line, all the way down the side and across the sill plate. Okay, you could use your trim removal tool to free up the bottom of the seatbelt container. and. The top has connections in it for the um, airbag, so you want to be careful here. But once you have this loose, you could peel back the headliner enough to reach the connector for the camera. Have I told you how much I love these trim removal tools? Here I'm using a wide one to take the uh, sill cover plate off. And you know you should really get yourself a set of these. I'll put a link in the description of the kit that I bought. Okay, we're here uh, obviously on the top of the bed and I have two of these really long trim removal tools and I like these because uh, in this situation because I have a really wide and broad surface. And as I'm looking through the clear lens, I could see the tapes on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna start by just prying a little bit on the bottom and see how this works. 
I have a heat gun nearby. Just go slow. It's actually working. Okay, we got her. Easiest way I found to remove the old adhesive tape is just to peel it back with your thumb. It's gonna kind of roll up into a ball like uh, rubber cement and just rip it off. And when you're test fitting this, you want to make sure that these brackets are aligned flat because when you put the screw in, that's how they're gonna to want to act. I could see now that I rotated that down, which I like that part, the tabs aren't open enough. So I'm just going to open them a bit more. Get nice and flat. When I come around to the tabs, they're sitting nice and flat on the back too. No, I'm going to put this screw in because I could see that it's perfect, but put the screw in, then I'll show you. Okay. Hopefully, I can see this now. So, I got my tabs aligned perfectly with the back of the light here. And on the back side here, you could see this, actually this tab is better than this one. What do I got going on here? I think that's going to be okay. And they give you a uh, very tiny Allen key to tighten this bolt. The camera. Other side, Michael. Use some acetone to get any of the glue residue off of the fiberglass and the brake light. Here I'm applying the tape to the bottom side of the brake light. After test fitting this a couple times, I could see that when the wire goes through the fiberglass hole, that it's going to uh, maybe want to pinch it. That's the last thing I want to do. So I have a really small file a little less than an eighth inch, but I bet it's going to make an eighth inch groove. And I'm just going to put to a slight relief at the top here. Re resist the urge to pull out your Dremel tool because it'll be a little too aggressive. Barely a little extra groove there. Much happier with that. Before we tape this down for good, I'm going to probably fill that hole with some silicone as an added leak protector. Okay, um, here's the back of the camera. We're using the big blue plug side, and there's a tab on here that indexes it. So push that in until it clicks. That looks good. Use a fish tape and a string to get this cable through the side of the bed and down to the ground. You can see there in the inset picture, the hole that you're trying to get it through is really small. So uh, fish tape is your friend. The camera cable came in wire loom material, so you probably don't need a grommet, but um, you know the wires for the cap are basically just the bare insulation. So I chose to uh, fit a grommet.
in that hole. The grommet they want you to pull it up through is right about here, and it is very hard plastic. And I've positioned this little scrub brush. You could use a piece of wood, you could use just about anything. And what you're, you're just trying to do is clearance the carpet up a little bit, because um, we're going to need to drill a hole. The instructions say it's a nice soft rubber grommet, but that's certainly not true on a 2024. And I doubt they changed it for 2024. So the 2020, 2020s through 24s are probably all the same. You need to drill about a half inch hole into that hard uh, plastic grommet. Here I'm using a spade bit on a extension just because clearance was tight and I needed something long enough to, to be able to reach from down low. Just be careful not to go up too uh, high and into the carpet. Throughout the cable along the frame, uh, I chose to put it adjacent to some other wire looms that were running the length of the frame and zip tied it uh, to those. Once you get uh, up to the grommet that you drilled a hole in, uh, send the wire through. I was going to use a grommet, uh, but it turned out the plastic uh, grommet from General Motors is just way too thick. I couldn't get uh, my rubber grommet onto it, so I'm going to end up siliconing uh, that entire thing shut. Okay, you can see that I removed uh, more of that door bushing, and that's so that I can run the camera wire and the camera wire first under the carpet and then behind this trim and we'll go from the front side. I'm gonna find that plug. You'll hear it click. Here I'm running the cable uh, inside the carpet and the trim and uh, replacing the rubber door gasket. Uh, make, make sure you wire, zip tie up any loose cable up under the headliner. Uh, there's plenty of room up there for it. Reconnect that seat belt trim on the inside and uh, reattach that coat hanger and you're just about done. Don't forget to uh, reconnect your battery cable and you'll be ready to test. And here's the final payoff. Uh, you could see the clarity of the camera is super, super clear. Uh, nice wide angle view. That car that's in the background is about 175 feet away. Uh, so the, the range is very, very good. I'm very happy with the overall results. And I yes, I've been through a car wash probably about 10 times since installing this and twice so far I've had to readjust the camera. So I'm okay with that. Uh, hey, I hope you enjoyed this content. If so, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and tight lines.